Hello everybody, happy Monday. Welcome to April. No jokes here today. <laughs> Even though I do love a good April Fool's joke, uh, we're not gonna do any today. So I'm just gonna set your mind at ease. Um, it's all real. <laughs> so I hope everybody had a great Easter. Uh, we had a lovely weekend, it was really nice. Um, if you're new here, my name's Bev McCullough of Flamingo Toes and I'm very happy to be here with you. We are sewing through my Vintage Stars quilt pattern that's right behind me, and this is week two. So if you're just now finding this video, this is the perfect time to be starting this quilt. Last week we just had kind of an intro video where I talked about all the things that we'll need for the quilt, and yeah, so you haven't missed anything. You can just reference that if you want to find out what you, what you need for the quilt, or I could just tell you today. Either way. <laughs> So let's see who's here. Uh, we have Teresa on first today. Thanks, Teresa, for stopping in. Allison says they're having crazy weather in Arizona. My goodness, that doesn't sound super fun. <laughs> um, let's see, we have uh, Tessa here and Creative Cats from Memphis. Hey, you're in my neighbor. Val's here from Tucson. Nandy's here. Hey, Nandy. Uh, Mary is here. Um, Wendy's here. Uh, Wendy was asking about acrylic stickers and uh, those are, uh, Allison answered you perfectly, acrylic stickers, sorry, you were asking about slipping on your ruler. So acrylic stickers work perfectly for that because they're clear, you can still see through your fabric or whatever you need to do, but they have kind of like a rubbery kind of feel on the back of them. So you can, um, that way you don't have to buy all new rulers. You can just buy the stickers and put them on. So <laughs> hopefully that helps. Uh, Beverly's here. Hey, from Northeast Ohio. Is it lovely in Northeast Ohio? We're supposed to get crazy weather tomorrow. I'm not excited about that. Uh, Vicki's here, Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. Rainy in Minnesota. Yeah, that's what's supposed to arrive here tomorrow. So um, I'm not excited about that. We'll see. Hopefully it's not as like dire as they're uh, predicting. So I wanted to thank you guys that came to my video sale last week with So Yeah Quilting in Las Vegas. We had a fun live sale last week on Thursday and I just loved seeing some of your names there. I really appreciate that. So I hope if you guys were able to tune into that, you had fun. If you weren't, um, but still want to check out, they did a really fun interview video with me. So if you go to So Ya Quilting on YouTube, you can find a little interview video with me. Um, at, not little, I think it was about an hour that we chatted. So it was really fun. So if you want to check that out, you're welcome to. But the sale is already done. So, um, so can't access that, but hopefully you uh, caught it live last week. <laughs> um, let's see. Mary says she's uh, she's not excited about tomorrow either. Yes, I think your storm zip in Kentucky tend to be a little bit worse than ours do down in Tennessee. So we'll all batten down the hatches tomorrow. <laughs> so today for Vintage Stars, we are going to talk about cutting. Um, I have information on how to cut with our paper templates that are included with the pattern, or you can pick up our acrylic templates that are designed to go for this quilt. They're they make cutting a whole lot easier, and so we're going to talk about both those things. So we're, And then there's also a tiny bit of marking that you need to do on some of the pieces that makes assembly even easier. And next week when we start assembly, we're going to go over why we've marked our pieces. So I want to make sure you don't miss that step. It's very easy to do, um, and assembly goes together much better once we've marked uh, some of the pieces. So we're going to talk about that and of course we will have our weekly giveaways. I also um, have a couple exciting like sale type things to share with you guys at the end of the video so make sure you stick around for that and our also our five dollar pattern of the month is new this week because it's the first so we have a new quilt pattern that's on sale. So we'll get to all of that at the end but first we're going to talk about templates and why they're awesome. <laughs> Are you guys ready? I hope you're ready. <laughs> oh, Pamela's here. Hey, Pamela. Okay, so 
Let me know in the comments if you have done a quilt with templates before or if this is your first time. I hope that we have a fun mix of both. Um, if it's your first time, don't fret. I promise you we, we've we got this. <laughs> um, I'm going to walk you through this and it just is really cool because templates allow you to cut pieces of a certain shape that would be a lot harder if you were just trying to do it with a ruler. And you can do some really creative things with piecing if you're using templates because you're cutting out unique shapes, not just squares and rectangles and triangles. So the templates afford you a lot of variety in your quilting. So don't be afraid of templates. <laughs> um, if you, the, the fun thing about my templates and what my, the, the templates in particular that we're using for this quilt are the half hexi and triangle templates. These I call my vintage quilting templates. They come in a package, both of them together, and they really come in handy with this quilt. The pattern does include paper templates, so whether you bought the PDF or the paper version of the pattern, you have paper templates. Um, but the acrylic templates really do make it a whole lot easier. The fun thing that I love about these is that allow, they allow us to recreate some vintage quilts that they used to make a long time ago with hand piecing, but we don't want to hand piece anymore. Well, at least I don't, let's be honest. Does anybody want to hand piece? Do you raise your hand if you like to hand piece? If you do, you get two gold stars for today because really I don't have time for that. <laughs> so um, they, they allow us to recreate those quilts, the style of those quilts, but with a whole lot easier method and much faster. So it's really fun. I love vintage things. I love the, the look of vintage star quilts or these same um, templates work for my vintage garden quilt and the penny serenade quilt. So if you have picked up the vintage half hexi, the half hexi and the triangle template, I have a couple other patterns that they work with. So none of this whole, you know, you buy the templates and they're only good for one pattern thing. We're not doing that <laughs> because really who has the money for that? I certainly don't. <laughs> So uh, I just want to make sure I'm not missing any questions here. Uh, Ruth's here. Pamela says, she, oh, Nandy says she's ready. Yay. And Pamela says templates are so helpful. That's great. Teresa says she's ready and she's used them before. Jeanette's here. Hey, Jeanette. And Wendy said she did the last Vintage Stars with the templates and it was her first time quilting. So she thought, she, she, so I thought my trying to cut out with the template te templates was beginner learning. <laughs> okay, we've got this, Wendy. <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do is talk about uh, how to cut these out in the easiest way. Jeanette, I have, uh, Jeanette asked where to buy the templates. You can find them in lots of different shops. Um, Happy Little Stitch, which we're partnering with, I believe has the templates. If she doesn't, I have them in my shop. Um, I have them linked in today's video description. So you can head to the video description and just click that link. They're available in my shop. <laughs> and Mary says she'll take those two gold stars for hand quilting. Yay! <laughs> Good job, Mary. Okay, let's look at what we need to cut out. So for this quilt, we need two shapes. And this quilt, maybe if you've never used templates before, it's assembled a little bit differently than other quilts. Like I said, we're not cutting out squares and triangles and rectangles. We're cutting out half hexagons and we're cutting out, well, we are cutting out triangles. Okay, but we're not cutting out regular triangles. <laughs> we're cutting out my triangles. <laughs> Um, okay, so you're going to need half hexagons, and this is the quilt mirror making. The half hexagon pieces are the background. So whatever background fabric you're using, we're using this Dainty Daisy. Um, it's one of my new Dainty Daisy low volumes. It's called Barn Red on Cloud. So that means the daisies are barn red, and the background is cloud, which is just the tiniest bit of off-white. It's not cream and it's not white white, so it's just a really nice blend. You can kind of see against this white um, cutting mat that it's just got a bit of a creaminess. So that's what I'm using for my background. And then for my prints, those are the stars and then our little triangles here that kind of meet, make our stars meet. So those are gonna be the print fabric. And for my print fabric, I'm using my Sweet Freedom Fabric Collection, which is in stores now. And so my version of the quilt is patriotic, but if you are making other fabrics, if you're using other fabrics, then you'll want, you can choose, you can do two different things. I've had people that make up the quilt using 
the stars being all low volume and they pick one bright floral or something like that as the background and those stars really pop and look beautiful. Um, most of the people though are quilting with a light or a dark color in the background and then the prints are the stars, the star of the show. <laughs> so they're really gonna stand out nicely. So these are the different prints we have. So I'm using the cut mostly the reds and blues for the star prints and then I'm using this kind of aqua blue for the connecting stars. So that is on this pattern, it's the dark red that is between each of the stars. That's gonna be this light blue. And you can see behind me in the quilt, it's just a little subtle blue against the white. It makes a fun little connection between those. So what we need to do, and all the information for how much is you're gonna cut out is in the pattern. Those are, all that information is in there. You do need to purchase the pattern to sew along with us, but you can find it in my shop and you can use whatever fabrics you'd like to sew. So with the pattern come templates. So these are included in the paper pattern. This is how they come. If you have bought the PDF pattern, they come with a piece of paper and then there's a little one inch square that is a size guide on the printout. So what you'll want to do is take one of your clear rulers and check it against the one inch square and make sure that it is exactly one inch because that will keep your measurements close to my measurements. <laughs> if your, pr your printer is printing out at a slightly different size, the pieces will all fit together fine. Your quilt's just gonna end up a different size than mine. It's not the end of the world. It's up to you. <laughs> oh, Val says she won her set from me and she's excited to finally use them. Yay, Val, that's awesome. Um, Mary said, oh no, I said that one already. And Karen's here, hey Karen. So these are paper templates and then the exact same size are the acrylic templates. These are made out of a high quality acrylic. They're really sturdy and they have a, a good Seam allowance, you're gonna cut on this line, not this line, this is just kind of showing you where that seam allowance line will be, which is helpful if you wanna do fussy cutting or something like that. And then there is a center marking line, which we use on some of our other quilts. We don't necessarily need it on this one. So you'll need both of these. This will be for your background fabric. This will be for all of your print squares. And also pink templates, right? <laughs> Why not? So for our background fabric, let's focus on that first. Most of you are using yardage, um, though you can use a 10 inch stacker if you wanna pick up a low volume or white or some, you know, whatever color matches your fabric and you're going to use a 10 inch stacker, you can do that for the background as well. But we're, most of us are using yardage. So what you'll want to do is cut your fabric into four and a half by width of the fabric strips. And I have one of those here. So by width of the fabric means that the strip is cut this way. So if your fabric is folded, I can't show you the whole thing. It's folded here and the selvages are down here and it's four and a half inches wide. So you'll lay your fabric out on your cutting mat and your yardage will be here and then you'll cut four and a half inches. So it's a long strip all the way down. And that's what that four and a half by the width of the fabric means. So our templates are four and a half inches wide. Isn't that magical? <laughs> so um, that's how we are going to save some time cutting with our templates. So if you go ahead and cut your background fabric into the strips, then you can easily put the templates onto the fabric and line them up. And so the top and bottom of the fabric should line up with the templates. So easy peasy there. <laughs> Hey Janice, I'm glad you're here live too. <laughs> okay, so for cutting, let's start with the paper. So if you have the paper templates, you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to line up your template on your fabric. What I recommend doing, as I'm looking around for my rulers, hang on one sec, hold please. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, sorry about that, y'all. This is me being prepared. So what you'll want to do is grab one of your rulers, a smaller one, not necessarily your six by 24 or whatever, and you're going to lay the ruler down, but you're going to place it so that it lines up with the edge of your template and you're gonna cut where the ruler is. It's very hard to have just a paper template to use a rotary cutter and get a straight line. You're going to inevitably cut at a curve or a, um, <laughs> Jenna says, uh oh. Oh, Pamela says she hasn't gotten her pattern yet, uh, but when I do, she's doing Christmas fabrics and she's doing the Sweet Freedom pattern with Sweet Freedom fabrics. Love it. I can't wait to say a Christmas version, Pamela. That's so fun. Yay. Okay. You have to share photos, please. So what you're going to do is you're going to line up that paper with your ruler and it makes it a little bit easier. You've got the cutting your so seam allowance guide so you can line that up if your ruler has a little seam allowance close to the edge. And you're gonna just go ahead and follow the line of your ruler and that will make a nice straight cut for you. You're gonna do that on both sides. So it, it's not hard, but it does take a little bit of extra time because you're placing the ruler and then you're placing the template and then placing the ruler on top of it, if that makes sense. And you're gonna kind of have to do some funky like angles with your body here. <laughs> there we go. That gives us our half hexy. Now, one of the other things we wanna make sure we do is you can see down here, and of course I'm using white fabric, but there are two little dog ear kind of cuts that you need to make on each end of that paper template. So go ahead and line that ruler up and cut off those little triangle pieces like that. Do not cut yourself. <laughs> that is a taboo. Okay, so you can see that it's not time, you know, it's just a little bit of extra time, but it's totally doable with just the paper pattern. So I am in no way, shape or form, saying you have to buy the acrylic templates. <laughs> okay, I don't want you to feel guilty. Um, if you would like to buy the acrylic templates, I'm gonna show you kind of at a vertical angle. It's a little bit easier than trying to do it horizontal. Now this works whether you're using the paper or the acrylic. If you have just cut the acrylic templates going this way, all you have to do to make sure you're using up all the fabric is turn your template the opposite direction. And you're gonna get the exact same half hexy, but you're gonna be able to get multiples out of a four and a half inch strip. So we're gonna go ahead and cut here, but all I've had to do is place my template right on the fabric and I can cut. So it just kind of saves that step of placing your paper and then placing the ruler on top of it. So easy peasy, right? So you can get, if your fabric is doubled, like it is, you know, off the bolt, you can get four plus one out of a four and a half inch strip. And you'll have to open this up and press it and usually I'll do that at the end like if I've cut all the others then I'll have take these leftover pieces press them and then kind of layer them so do two at a time rather than press cut and then go on to the next strip so just to save you a little bit of time so that's what we're going to do with all of our background fabrics easy right does anybody have any questions at this point about that oh Jeanette said my nail polish is pretty thank you Jeanette <laughs> and Cynthia's here hi Cynthia <laughs> Okay, so that is what we're gonna do for the background. The triangle template, which is our print template, is done the exact same way. So we're going to take the triangle. We have cut a four and a half inch strip, which is the width of our triangle template. Both templates are the same width. We want that because we want them to line up nicely and play together when we sew them together. <laughs> And we're gonna do the exact same thing. Now, if you're using yardage, you'll cut a four and a half inch strip of yardage by the width of the fabric, and you'll cut out your templates with the triangles just like you did the other. If you are doing a 10 inch stacker, I still recommend cutting four and a half inch strips, and then you can kind of lay them over each other, do a couple at a time, and then cut your triangles out that way. Make sure 
with this that you cut just like you did with the template. So every other template is gonna be upside down. And that's going to give you the most use and get the most templates out of your fabric, okay? And if you are doing a fat quarter, which if you've bought the kit from Happy Little Stitch Shop, most of you are working with fat quarters, then you're gonna do the exact same thing. Press your fat quarter first. I will be the first to admit I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to pressing before cutting. I just don't want to take the time to do it. But because we're not working with typical shapes and it's pretty important that we have our shapes be the exact size they need to be, we're not trimming after or anything like that, you want your fabric to be pretty flat before you cut. So don't be like Bev. <laughs> Be like those good quilters. Well, I'm a good quilter. I don't mean to imply I'm not, but be like those really careful quilters who press first and press your fat quarters nice and flat before you cut out your templates. Then cut them into four and a half strips. And I would cut them into, so a fat quarter is 18 by 22. I would cut 22 by four and a half inch strips, which is gonna give you the most pieces out of your fat quarter bundle, okay? So I hope that helps and that's just a little bit of my like two cents on those. <laughs> so we're gonna do the exact same thing with the triangle template. One of the things that you will want to make sure with your triangle template, it's a little bit hard to see on this frosted, is there's definitely an up and a down. This is a sideways version of the template. I don't want you to cut out your pieces sideways. So when you're cutting and you've got a four and a half inch strip Either the bottom or the top of the triangle need to be at the bottom or the top. We're not gonna ever cut out our pieces like this or like this, okay? So always do it like this so that, here, let's do this on a different color for heaven's sake. Can't see anything. Let's use the blue. Okay, is that a little easier? Much better, ha ha. Okay, so I'm going to line this up. I've got this lined up with my edge where I've already cut. I'm actually gonna move, let's move some things around and get ourselves some workspace. I find it's a little bit easier to cut vertically because I can do multiple cuts at one time without having to twist my body around too much. So I'm going to line up my ruler with the edge that I've already cut. You can see now, here I go sideways. This is going sideways, but that is because my strip is going sideways, okay? So we're gonna cut here. These rulers do not have um, stickies on the end of them, on the back side of them. They're non, not non-stick. They're, what am I trying to say? They're not, they're slippery. <laughs> they're slippery a little bit. If you are finding that your templates are shifting around too much on you, one, try and press a little bit harder, but two, you can get acrylic stickers, clear stickers that go on the back that are designed for rulers that will help keep your rulers a little bit more in place. So you can just Google those on Amazon or wherever. So I'm going to go ahead and cut, and I'm going to make sure I cut my little dog ears, which sounds very sad. Why are they called that? My little triangle points, I'm not gonna call them that anymore. It's very mean. Um, and then I'm going to take care to turn my triangle the right side up. So this is the way I cut it and I want to remember that. And the reason I want to do that is because I want you to mark a small line and you only have to do this on the triangles. You don't have to do it on the half hexes. I want you to mark a little spot right down here within the seam allowance around the center of the bottom of your triangles. And I want you to do that, actually you probably need to do that on the wrong side. So we're just going to go like this and like this, and we're just gonna make a little mark down there because I want you to know which is the bottom of the triangle. Once they're cut, it's a little bit harder to tell which is which. So you want to have this marked because we need to know that for assembly next week. I promise the quilt will go together much better if, and the pieces will lay together correctly and you will have a nice straight row once we sew them together if you mark that and you pay attention to that. 
So that's what we're going to do. Now, I'm using a water soluble. I am marking in the seam allowance. So if it's not gonna show, I'm gonna sew that into the seam and then I'm not gonna worry about it. I don't recommend using an air soluble for this one because it might it won't be there unless you're going to literally take them over to the sewing machine and sew. If you're cutting, I don't recommend I don't recommend air soluble. The other thing you might need to do is have a couple on hand because some of these darker fabrics, the blues of most water soluble pens are not going to show up. So you're still going to need to mark them, but what I have here is a um, sew line marking pen. Any white marking pencil will do if you just have a, a, a white pencil or anything like that. The thing I like about this sew line is it has, you can see the white tip there, but it's got multiple. So it has a pencil tip, a pen, which I've had this pen forever and so the pen doesn't work anymore, but whatever, I never even used it. But I keep it for the white pencil. So I like that. So I can make my, you know, I can do my cut here, pretend I did a cut, and then I can mark on that blue with, um, with the white pencil. You can see the mark there. There you go. So that is the big info that you need for today. You want to make sure that you are cutting your triangles out so that the top or the bottom line up with that four and a half inch strip, never sideways. And you also want to make sure you do that little mark on the, I think it's on the wrong side. We need it on the wrong side. Let me look at the pattern and double check. <laughs> Uh, yes okay so it doesn't say in the pattern you know who wrote this thing <laughs> um, but I like to just mark both sides just to be sure and that way I know for sure no matter which side of the fabric you know if you've got them stacked together when you go to pull for a piece you um, you want to be able to tell where that bottom is on that triangle the other thing is if you are not working with, um, well, whether you're working with fab my fabrics or not, you're going to want to remember that you're cutting out your fabrics in sets of two. So like on the quilt behind me, the sections are sewn together. We're making basically a six point star, right? So there are six different prints in each star but each point of the star is made up of two half square, tri two triangle templates. So two of these. So what you're going to want to do is make sure that in each star, you have two of the same fabric so that you can make up that whole point of the star. Let me go to what I'm, this might sound like gibberish. I don't want it to sound like gibberish. So what we're doing is this is our whole star, right? and there are one, two, three, four, five, six colors, but within this point of the star, which makes a diamond, there are two of the triangle templates. So you want both, the, both sections to be the same print, or else you're gonna lose a little bit of that six point star thing, unless that's the vibe you're going for. But for the most part, we want to try and keep these all the same. So there will be 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, 12 triangles that make up a star, but only six fabrics. So two of these per point. Let me know if that's not clear. I'm trying to make it as clear as possible. I've said it like six ways to Sunday, but I'm still feeling like I'm not explaining it right. So if you are cutting out your fabrics, you'll want to make sure that you have two sets for each star, two sets for each print, two triangles. For each point of a star <laughs> all right let me know if that makes sense linda says she's never used templates jeanette said you can double fold the fabric right yes absolutely you can cut two at once um, i don't recommend getting too crazy with them because you are dealing with a template and um, like i said my acrylic templates even with the paper templates if you're putting a ruler over it there is still an opportunity for slippage and the higher your fabric is, the less accurate your cut is, and we really want these to be accurate. So don't go too crazy and stack five, four, six, you know, layers together and cut them. Just keep it at two. It, I promise it will go pretty fast to cut it out. It's not going to be too terrible. You'll get your strips made and 
and you'll be able to cut those templates out pretty quickly. So don't worry too much about that. <laughs> All right, that, those are the big tips I have for putting our quilts together, for cutting our quilts out. We're not gonna put them together till next week. Um, they are assembled a little bit differently than other pieces. We are not going to sew them together in block form. We are going to sew them together in rows. And so I really want you to um, tune in next week because we're going to just start that and it's going to be great. And I'm going to show you how to line up the pieces so that they match and make a nice straight row and how to follow the pattern so that our rows actually form stars, <laughs> which is the goal here, right? Okay. So, um, let me know if you have more questions about template cutting or anything like that as we go on. But I, um, Oh, Dorothy, Dorothy said the templates are great. Thanks Dorothy. <laughs> but I think we should talk about other things. Let's go on to other things, right? So um, you guys know the RBD block challenge is still going on. We have two months left, April and May. Uh, we had a bye week last week, so I don't have a block to show you from last week. Actually, I was gone for the whole month of March. So next week I will have this week's block, which is releasing tomorrow to show you guys, and I'll show you my blocks so far in the challenge. So we only have two months left. I think there's four blocks in April. April and three blocks in May and then the last week of May is the finishing putting it all together So it's been really fun. I'm sewing with my afternoon tea fabrics and uh, So it's been nice because we're done with that so long, but I still get to play with them a little bit longer So I'm excited about that. So that's going on still um, If you've been following along I have sewn together All but two of my blocks for my shine together quilt. That was a RBD block challenge No RBD <laughs> Riley Blake so long that was for Hush Hush 3, which is one of their low volume collections. So I have to finish those up here and I will be able to share my final version of that quilt very soon. So I'm excited about that. I wanted to let you know we have a new $5 pattern of the month. Every month I pick a quilt pattern and it's on sale for only $5. It's a great time to pick up a pattern for your pattern stash and this month's pattern that's on sale is my Meadowland pattern. So if you don't already have that pattern, you didn't sew along with us last year to make the Meadowland quilt, this is a great time to pick it up. It is only $5 PDF or paper patterns and I have the link in today's video description for you. So that's super fun and exciting. And speaking of super fun and exciting, the basic of the month at Fat Quarter Shop is Dainty Daisy. You guys, for the whole month of April, Dainty Daisy is 20% off at Fat Quarter Shop. And guess what? That's not just yardage, that's pre-cuts too. So you can get a fabulous price on the Fat Quarter Bundle, which is one of every print, every colorway in Dainty Daisy. That's 30 Fat Quarters. Um, or you can get the 10 inch stacker, which makes is perfect for my Love to Stitch quilt, which is a free pattern on the Riley Blake website. I'll show you guys that quilt next week so that you can see it. It's really fun. If you want to search for it, just search that on the Riley Blake website. But if you want to wait, I'll show it to you next week. But it's 10 inch stacker friendly. And um, that's also the yardage too. So I, I did add all of the Dainty Daisy yardage to my shop um, last week. Was, um, <laughs> so if for some reason Fat Quarter Shop runs out of something, you can now find yardage in my shop of Dainty Daisy, which is very exciting. We've never done yardage before. But now that Becca's here and working for us, that is something new and exciting. But I really would prefer that you get the 20% off at Fat Quarter Shop. That does help me out a ton. So don't feel like you're, you know, helping. Oh, you are helping me if you buy it from my shop. But it helps me just as much if you buy it from Fat Quarter Shop. So don't feel conflicted about doing that. Definitely go get the 20% off. I have the Dainty Daisy sale, like, page on Backwater Shop linked in today's video description so you can go check that out and make sure that you take advantage of that. It's all month long but don't wait because if it goes crazy they'll sell out of stuff and then they have to get it in and it might not be back in before the sale ends so don't wait until the end of the month to do your dainty daisy shopping. <laughs> all right so yes and we have like fun sew alongs coming up with Dainty Daisy My Heartland Quilt is the next so long that uses a stargazer background if you're buying the quilt kit those are in the shop 
um, at Fat Quarter Shop and in my shop as well. But if you want to just pick a different red, white, and blue collection and make it up with a dark background, that Stargazer is really great. Or if you want to make up my new Sweet Freedom quilt, that uses denim Dainty Daisy. So we're all about the Dainty Daisy here. <laughs> Uh, Diane said someone asked about Scrappy. This quilt would look great Scrappy. I think it would be really fun Scrappy too, Diane. I would love to see that. Dorothy says, oh yay, Dainty Daisy is so perfect for not quite solids. A few are finding their way into her quilted witch. Yay! Yay, Dorothy. Thanks for that. Christine says she loves Dainty Daisy. And so does Jeanette. Thank you guys. Aw, yay! That makes my day. So those are the big announcement-y things, I think. Um, so let's have giveaway time. Should we have giveaway time? Last week was our opening of the uh, quilt along and I tend to do bigger, bigger ones, bigger giveaways, bigger ones, whatever that is about, for the giveaway. So here's our fun, fun little giveaway. giveaway. It is a fat quarter bundle of Sweet Freedom. So you can use that to make this quilt or you can use it to make the Heartland quilt. Or really, I promise, you can use it to make whatever you'd like. So here's all the fun colors of Sweet Freedom. And to go with that, I have two needle minders that work great for Sweet Freedom projects or any projects. They are our new little barn with the quilty flag and the quilty barn star. And then the little heart flag block that is a part of our Sweet Freedom quilt. So these are fun and brand new. You can find those in the shop. And our winner this week is Ingrid Tinsley and her YouTube handle is Ingrid Tinsley 4141. So yay Ingrid, congratulations. Send me an email, bev at flamingotoes.com and we will get your prize out to you this week. My giveaways are super easy to enter. All you have to do is leave a comment on the YouTube video and that counts as your entry. So I draw the winner the following Monday right before our next video. So it's super easy, you have all week to enter. <laughs> So this week I have a fun assortment of things for you guys. You guys might not know this, um, some of you might know, Riley Blake is the Quilting Cottons distributor for Liberty Fabrics, which is one of my favorite things in the world because that means that I can sew with Liberty. <laughs> and I'm super excited about that. This is a 10 inch stacker from the Collector's Home Pavilion Neutrals. And these are gorgeous, you guys. Look at these fabrics. These are all Liberty. They all blend together so lovely. Oh my gosh. Look at how pretty. Oh my goodness, there's butterflies. You guys, isn't this a fun assortment? They're, they're beautiful fabrics, so you know that the details are perfect. I really love these little leaves. Look at these leaves. Aren't these gold leaves beautiful? So these are all in the stacker. There's 42 pieces, 10 inch fabrics. They would look beautiful in any quilt you have. So this is a Liberty 10 inch stacker. Wendy says Liberty is so beautiful. And Jeanette says, ooh, Liberty, right? That's what you say is, ooh, Liberty. <laughs> I love it. Um, I have a six and a half inch quilt, Cute Cuts Lori Holt ruler to go with this. This is perfect for what we're doing. It's the same size as the little ruler I was using for my templates. I just love little rulers like this. They're perfect for taking with you if you're gonna go on a trip and sew, but they're also just super handy if you're doing fussy cutting or any kind of trimming or anything like that. It's always good to have a little stash of small rulers. So this is Lori's ruler. And speaking of Lori, I have a really fun little treat for you here. This is a bee binding holder. How cute is this, you guys? It's blue and it has flowers. This was in one of the sew sampler boxes. There's even a bee. Um, so the really nice thing is this is wide enough that it would hold probably two quilts worth of binding. So you just would wrap it around here and it would hold your binding. And that way you can make up your binding while your quilt's at the long arm or so you don't lose whatever fabric goes with the quilt. You know, I just, I have a lot of fabric here. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to remember what I bought for the binding. But that way if you make up the binding, you can put it on this cute little binding holder. And I think it's just darling. And look, you can hang it on your wall. It's got a hole. Perfect. So that is this week's giveaway. If you would like to enter, just leave a comment. If you are here and watching, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. But I can't see who you are until you actually comment. So if you would like to be entered, definitely leave a comment. And all of our giveaways are open internationally as well. I have 
uh, no problem shipping to our international friends. I really appreciate you watching, whether you're watching in the U.S. or somewhere else. <laughs> so that's our giveaway for the week. Super easy, super fun. If you guys have questions about the templates as you're cutting out, please email me or leave a question on the video or message me on Facebook. Don't message me on Facebook. I never get those. Facebook doesn't ever send anybody any messages. So email me, Bev at flamingotoast.com is the best way to get a hold of me. And next week we, were gonna, we are gonna start assembling our quilts. So I think you'll find that it, this quilt is a really fun one to put together because it feels a little bit differently than, different than the way we normally assemble quilts, which I love. Anything that kind of shakes up the norm and makes things different and fun and learn something new, hopefully you guys enjoy that too. So thank you guys for sewing along with me. I'm super excited to see all your quilts and I can't wait to see what fabrics you're using and how they all go together. So. All right, yay! Oh, Jennifer's from Tennessee. Oh, you guys are excited about the Liberty. Yay, I'm so glad. <laughs> and Jane says she's never used any Liberty fabric. Okay, Jane, we'll get you hooked. It's very lovely. The details in their prints are just stunning. <laughs> All right, you guys, have a fabulous first week of April. Don't let anybody trick you today. And I will see you back next Monday. Make sure you come by the blog this week. I will have another um, RBD block challenge block. I will share whatever is this week. I can't remember in the Quilted Witch Sew Along that we've, I've been sewing along since, gosh, I don't know, October, September? When did that sew along start? Long time ago. But we're plugging away at it and we're going to have fabulous Quilted Witch quilts. Quilted Witch quilts at the end. <laughs> Thank you guys for bearing with me today. It's so fun to hang out with you on Mondays. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate all your support. I'll see you guys next Monday. Thanks.